Welcome to the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, where there's always another secret. Welcome back, Sixers, to another episode of the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies. This is episode 144. Today is September 11th, 2023. I am Bill, and I'm joined, as always, by my momentous co-hosts, Amy and Jordan. Welcome. Hello. Hello. I almost said gross because it's episode 144, but after painful last week or last time, I figured I should not go for one that could be potentially insulting. Yeah, please don't. I groom. But, but it's a gross. It's a, it's an anyway. Before we get started, we do want to remind our listeners that the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is not a spoiler-free podcast. That means that if there is something in the Cosmere you haven't read and you're worried about hearing spoilers, you might want to go read those first, then come back and join the discussion. And that is especially true tonight, because tonight we're doing another deep dive into a specific scene, and this one is very much a spoiler from Rhythm of War. So now is the time to get out, but then go read it and come back afterwards. Because, I mean, here, here's my book. It's it's here. <laughs> yeah. So, end, but, but like, seriously, now is the time to get out mm -hmm. and then come back afterwards. Everyone gone? All right. We are talking about the scene. Not everyone gone. Everyone gone who hasn't read the book. Anyway, we are talking about the scene where Kaladin takes his fourth oath and the events leading up to mm. it. This is a big one. This was one of the most powerful Jeez. scenes I think I've read that Brandon's written. Uh, so for those of you who listen to the podcast recordings or watch the videos on YouTube after the fact, we do want to remind you that you can actually join uh, in and interact with us live via chat as we record each episode at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. We record episodes every other Monday night starting at 7.30 p.m. Pacific time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern. So please join us and take an active part in the discussion. Uh, the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies is made possible by the support of our listeners and patrons. The show will, of course, continue to be free, but if you want to help us out, head over to patreon.com slash Cosmere Studies. Even pledging a buck or two per episode really helps us out as we work to improve the show. Patrons get immediate access to our Discord channel where you can talk about the show and the Cosmere with other listeners. It's a great community. We've got a lot of good discussions over there. We'd love to have you join us. Uh, you'll also get early access to bonus episodes, exclusive access to other bonus content, and other good stuff. Um, so how are y'all doing? I, I feel like we never really talk that much. And so <laughs> Yeah, today was today was a bad day. But yeah, that was and, just because I had to like go, 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 go all day and I'm tired. So but yeah. Anything exciting going on life on in life? I'm I'm getting shutters on my windows upstairs. Very nice. That's a very Instead adult. Of, excitement instead of very sad blinds that i'm so tired of like one more broken we're like okay that's it we're not we're not replacing these we're getting shutters we're not doing Ooh. blinds anymore so, so like they're the fancy interior shutters that you can swing yeah and i don't remember how they move but yeah but they're the fancy interior oh ones. i like those my sister so. used to have those yeah. ah fun times Fancy. fun fun times i made i just uh, cried a lot today hmm? i yeah i think we all did probably there's there's some tears <laughs> involved in this chapter um yeah. I made something called smoked shotgun shells, which were absolutely Stop. delicious. It's basically ground meat, gr ground beef and sausage and cheese. And then I had some peppers that I grew that I chopped up and roasted. Um, and I mixed that all up together, stuffed it inside of a manicotti, wrapped it in bacon and smoked it, and then painted some barbecue sauce on and smoked it a little longer to let it get tacky. And they were very, very good. Jordan stole some of them. You were, they were freely offered. They were <laughs> very enough. freely taken, let me tell you. Mm -hmm. uh, all delicious. right. Well, uh, let's move on into our announcements. Jordan, how are we doing with our push to 3,000 hours? Um, we are at 2,085 uh, out of the 3,000. So we're just a hair under 70%. We, uh, we, we fell off a little bit. I think people going back to school mm. we got out of the groove. Yeah. So we need people to get back on the groove. Yes, we would very much appreciate that. But yeah, otherwise, uh, 
No, it's going well. Okay, well, let's move on into the Cosmere Thing of the Week. And Amy, you found this one, so why don't you tell us what we're looking at? So I, I still, I, I poked the creator and I didn't I didn't do it soon enough, so I don't know if I'm saying the name right at all, but it's Shane, Shane Dole Art. Okay. And she has a pretty big um, presence on Instagram and different things, but this it's a picture of Kaladin and it is it's so gorgeous. <laughs> um, and she does a bunch of videos on TikTok as well as on her Instagram where she like will draw the like she'll have the sketch already done or she's working on the sketch and you get to see her process of doing it. And she, it's, it's time skipped a little bit here and mm-hmm. there. Of course. But she'll have she'll read some of the scenes and she puts big a lot of emotion into it. And you it's just it's so good. Like I'm already getting teary eyed even thinking about it because she picks like the really good scenes mm-hmm. and she'll talk about it. And she's done a lot of different Cosmere characters. She also does non Cosmere characters too, but she's got really pretty art and it's got a lot of like glowing lights, which works well with radiance. So, you know, well, and, really and this pretty one pretty. in particular is very appropriate for today's discussion. Mm-hmm. I think I was like, I got to find a calendar so, one. We'll so do that. Very one. Good That's pick. a good one. So thank you. All right. Well, uh, we'll definitely, yeah, we'll have, and we'll have a link to that up in the show notes. If you want to check it out for yourself. Um, all right, let's move on to Sanderson news. As of a week ago, Stormlight 5 was at 73%, which means that tomorrow, it, he said, it's very likely that he'll, he'll hit 75%, which is three quarters Ooh. of the way through. I think he's even going to have a special graphic. So, mm-hmm. uh, Skyward Legacy is still at 34%. Um, and again, Defiant is the big release this year at Dragonsteel. And he went into some details on how people can get their signed copies if they want. This has been a little bit of a controversial topic. I've, I've seen a lot of debate on this on Reddit because right now the only way to get a signed numbered copy is as part of the uh, the swag bundle that's mm, coming out I with Dragon Steel. Yeah, so, so, so I've, I've seen some complaints about that. There's a lot of... I mean, he, but basically Brandon is signing so many books that they're trying to find a way to actually make it economical like economical time wise and worth the time of the people he's paying to, to help him with this because it's like a massive production for him to go through and do all of these. So um, this is, this is the price of uh, mm -hmm. Brandon's time becoming so valuable. Yeah. Do we know if um, they're going to just have signed copies at Dragonsteel to buy? I think they will at Dragonsteel have signed numbered copies. Okay. Um, I'm not positive about that. Yes, you, you have to be there physically to to actually get it. Um, I, I have ordered a swag bundle because, oh my gosh, some of the stuff in this is kind of amazing. Because first off, you, you, apparently you open it up and it's a metal lunchbox, like an old classic 70s, mm-hmm. 80s lunchbox um, with the the slugs, the, the slug mm-hmm. squad on it. And I'm just I like, swear. okay, I have no use for this, but cool. <laughs> And then there's a Hesho plushie. Mm-hmm. And like, what? do you know, do you remember who Hesho is? You, you only yes. got partway through Star Sight, Jordan. Oh, okay. He's the little fox gerbil guy. He's the little fox gerbils or hamsters. I think it's Sanderson called uh, his, his fox gerbils or, or gerbils. Or, uh, yeah. They're, yeah so they're, they're, they're called far, Kitsun. They're, they're based on the Japanese Kitsun. Kitsune. Um, Kitsune. Yeah. And, uh, and they're it, like this big. And, and he's ab- adorable. And he's absolutely adorable. <laughs> and I was like, well, I have the Doom Slug plushie. He needs a friend. So, <laughs> I, I have the hesitation of of I could make that. So, I, <laughs> will you make that? Dilemma. People who buy things are suckers. I could make it, but will I make it? I don't know. Yeah. So that's but this is but this is officially licensed. Oh, so, I know. I know. I'm not saying it's not cool, and I'm not saying people shouldn't buy it. I'm just mm-hmm. saying for me, it's kind of weird. Mm. Because I know I could make it. It may not look exactly the same, but like it's just that whole weird thing for me. Just so we're clear, Amy is not going to be running a bootleg Hesho production. I am not. I am so not please, selling those plushies. Please, Sanderson legal team, <laughs> do not send us another cease and desist. This is not happening. I'm just saying I could. Uh, but there's also a, a pin of Hesho's mm-hmm. ma- war mask that he wears. And then, yeah. of course, the signed and numbered copy of Defiant. So that's what's going to be in this swag bundle. And yeah, kind of cool. High quality stuff. Like Brand- Brandon mm-hmm. has reached out to some good manufacturers. I mean, if you if you've been getting yeah. the if you've been looking at or getting the um, 
year of Sanderson boxes, boxes, you know that there's some nice stuff. This month was a really nice one because there's like some knife stuff in it. Knife stuff, true. Knife blood. Wait, was this was this Warbreaker? This was Warbreaker. So the 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 letter opener, the the Night Night blood warp letter opener was in it, and some really nice glass coasters with the Mm. the um, Nalthus symbol on them. Really, Mm. really pretty. And breath mints. <laughs> because mango flavor. One of them was mango. Because or something? breath. Because when you're trading <gasps> breath with someone, oh! you want it to be sweet. <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Good. Yeah. Wow. Uh, uh, I feel sad that I didn't. You know, it. whoever came up with that, they're over there going, hee hee. Oh, just yes. giggling to themselves. Um, Honestly, I can totally see Brandon saying, could we do like breath mints or something? <laughs> and Carrie just saying, I can make that happen. <laughs> That's easy enough. Yeah, we can do that. Um, but yeah, so if you want to get a bundle, you can order them on dragonsteelbooks.com from their website. Um, if you're going to the convention and you want to pick it up there, you can go to dragonsteel.com, order it there. Um, or if you're going to the convention, you can just buy them on site there as well. So again, I don't know if the books will be numbered, signed, if you buy it at drag at dragon steel convention. I believe that's the case though. Yeah, that's. But who knows? It's they you know, likely, they can but change. listen to his videos to be sure mm-hmm. and everything else. So anyway, so uh, let's move on and start the tears of flowing. Why don't we? Yes. I came <sighs> prepared. <laughs> Smart. I did not come. Pre- I am not prepared. Mine are way over there. So we'll see how I do. Illidan is judging me. Hmm. So let's. uh <sighs> Just a little bit of background. So this is shortly after, and again, this is major spoilers, so you've been warned. It should already be gone. I I have no uh, qualms about this at this point. This is shortly after um, Moash has murdered Teft Teft and um, what's her name? Disabled Lift. No, what what is uh, his friend's name? I believe her name was Teft Spren. Fenandra or something? Fendrana. Fendrana. Like, yeah, I Fendrana. Can't ever say the name. You sure? I thought that's the name of the ice place in Metroid Prime. It might be. But, uh, I have to find out. Maybe. Anyway. Anyway. Um, so basically, and then he's also hucked, uh, Kaladin's father off of the yeah. top of Eurythiru. Mm-hmm. So, Kaladin's in Fendora, a bad Fendorana. Fendorana. So I, I had a, I, I missed a letter. Yeah. Um, but that is really all that separates it from the Metroid place. Um, <laughs> but yeah, but Kaladin's in a bad spot. <laughs> let's yeah. say, let's say the depths of despair. Also known as a day that ends in a Y, but especially so today. <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, yes. when, you know, when your dad gets hucked off of a, a, a tower, it's, it's upsetting. Yeah, um, and he's already exhausted. Like he started this whole fight exhausted, mm-hmm. and he killed the pursuer. And he doesn't even like the thing that stuck with me this time when I reread it is that he's got so much going on the f- that he doesn't even really remember how he killed the pursuer. That was not a big thing in his head. Versus like that was a horribly graphic and what, awful and way to he, go. He, it's not just that. Like we got to remember, Odium has been working on him. Oh yeah. Trying oh, yeah. to turn him into his champion similar to the way mm-hmm. Moash is right now. Yeah. And so he's just been worn down over the past, you know, days just a week or whatever can't it is. Sleep. Yeah. Well, and the hard part is that Kaladin's aware of this. Like he mm-hmm. he knows that the storm or not the storm for that Odium is working on him. He says he wants me as he wanted Ma- Moash and if he keeps pushing he'll have me. So I have to go. This is where Kaladin's just like, it's time for me to die. He's like, I like, can't do this. And like, and Syl's like fallen kind of back because, you know, things are iffy and weird and mm-hmm. and she's forgetting things. And Well, yeah, well, sad. partially because, you know, the effect of the, the, the sibling the being corrupted. Field. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But it's also like she's trying to understand Kaladin more mm-hmm. and. Yeah. She's having to deal with his depression. Yeah. For the On first steroids. Time. And, yeah. Yeah. Really bad. 
And so no, nobody is in a happy place right now. And oh, yeah, I don't think Liren's having a great time of it right oh, now no. either. Oh, no. Oh, no. Um, although he's kind of frozen in time at the moment because Kaladin's in the moment between moments. Well, in that part, yes. Yeah. But uh, the, the conversation that he starts having with the Stormfather is really cool. And this is, this, in my opinion, is one of the most blatant moments where Brandon is addressing mental health. Um, because Kaladin's saying, you know, I have to go. And the very first thing he says, that's a lie. It's his ultimate lie. The lie that says you have no choice. The lie that there is no more journey worth taking. Mm. Now, I'm not going to go into specific details because this is very personal, but I've had moments with, uh, uh, with depression that have felt like that. It's, it's one of the most, I mean, hopeless is really the only way to describe it. Um, And so I just, I I love, like, it's very blatant, but it doesn't feel shoehorned in. It fits this moment perfectly because that's where Kaladin is. He is, like, he is at the absolute point where he's broken. Yeah. Well, it's it's all, it's the phrase that, uh, you use for, you like to use from uh, Lord of the Rings the uh, the butter over too much bread or he spread thin like butter over too much bread yeah bread yeah okay yeah um, but it's the thing is right now why it feels so much more appropriate even though this is literally you know nail on the head is who he's talking to mm-hmm. the storm father is the bluntest instrument out there mm-hmm. yeah he doesn't know subtlety he right and so he's he just says exactly what he thinks Mm -hmm. yep and and because he's of honor he has to he says the most true thing so he calls out the lie blatantly Mm -hmm. whereas everyone else might dance around it a little bit and and cowden says he was right a tiny part of him a part that could not lie to himself knew that it was true because it's it it's a lie that's just it's an abject blatant lie that's one of the things that one of the phrases that finally stuck out to me when I was trying to figure out my own anxiety and depression, anxiety lies, depression Mm -hmm. lies in the moment you are so absolutely sure that what you're feeling is true, but it is a lie. And I I just, I love that it actually shows up in this moment. Mm -hmm. And, and again, from this voice, this voice of, this blunt instrument, like you said, Jordan, it's just, there are certain people who, you know, sometimes you need to talk to that sympathetic friend. Other times you need to talk to somebody who's going to smack you in the face and say no. And Not in okay. this moment, the storm father is who Kaladin needed to hear first. He's not the only thing that Kaladin needed to hear, but it, <laughs> it prepared him for what came next. I think. Yeah. Cause it doesn't work. No, it doesn't work. Um, but in tandem with what comes next, I, th- I, th- I think this is an important moment. Yeah. yeah. Well, because one thing is I think it gets Kaladin to admit what the actual problem that he's having right now is just he is so worn down mm-hmm. and tired. Yeah. And it's not that there isn't any hope. It's that he just doesn't feel like he has anything left in the tank. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he's running on fumes. Is where he, he says there I, simply wasn't anything left for him to give. to give. And that's where the scene cuts back to Dalin Arya. Mm-hmm. Well, it's especially when you look, you know, Kaladin's someone who, when he's at his darkest, he draws his strengths from, from Syl, from Teft. And mm-hmm. Syl is not in a good place. Teft is gone. And like, that's part of this whole spiral. Yeah. And I mean, it, it and, doesn't help that he's had like a couple minutes since Tef died. And so Mm -hmm. he doesn't, he he hasn't been able to process the grief. He hasn't been able to deal with it. And then his, now his father is is effectively, effectively dead. Yeah. He's already, he's already given up. Yes. He's already sees his father Mm -hmm. is dead. Yeah. Well, and and not, you know, and backing up a bit further, he's supposed to be on rest right now. Dalinar Mm -hmm. left him behind specifically because he's overworked himself mm-hmm. and he needs to recuperate. 
and yeah. Dalinar sees it, and then this all happens. So he like, was removed like, from duty. Yeah. yeah, he was on. Yeah, he was trying to deal with burnout, and so he was burned out before this all yes. started. Mm-hmm. Well, and, and it's I mean, kind he, of he like taken, he, he was doing slightly better. He was taking a few good steps and like getting some calm and whatever else. And then Irithru got invaded. So, you know, that kind of blew that. Well, inertia was working against him at this point, because I remember when I was, uh, when I was a teenager, I was riding in a car with my, with my cousin and we were literally on fumes in his car. And like, Mm. we were around the corner from a gas station and we stopped. and, And of course the light turned red. And oh, so he really? stops and he's, and he's thinking we're going to run out of gas. So he turned the car off thinking he's going to, cons- he's going to conserve what little is there. And then the light turned on and he couldn't turn it back on because suddenly inertia is against him. You have to spend extra gas to, to ignite the engine. Mm-hmm, and, uh, you know, that's kind of what's going on with Kaladin is he finally had an opportunity to stop and now he's got to start sprinting again. And, it's even more exhausting when you're when you're trying yeah. to pick up from exhausted already. Mm-hmm. Well, and and on top of it, like him go, going all John McClane on everything, mm-hmm. it was preceded by a giant fight with his father. Like they were start, he was starting to find a new spot for himself yeah. where mm-hmm. he was falling back into the routine of a healer. Yeah. And though this time, you know, not just physical but also mental and mm-hmm. And stuff Starting like that. Therapy. And so he and his father's <laughs> relationship was beginning to repair itself a mm-hmm. bit. And then just the conflict of what's been their, their entire conflict, their entire life uh, of the pacifism versus. Uh, Soldierism. Yes. I don't know. Responsive. I guess I'll respond. You know, he's a soldier like, you know, mm-hmm. he's born for it. And that constant conflict it's just it's out of the head the entire time it's just, he is being rubbed so raw yeah it's it's I'm crazy just... like there are authors who i've said are very very mean to their characters robin hobb is the prime example and i know that brandon is a fan of hers but um and Brandon normally doesn't go quite as far with his characters as she does with her. She's, she's sadistic. It's like, but, <laughs> but um, I think Kaladin at, at this point, at this moment is getting to where sh- she has been with her characters before he's just mm-hmm. spent. He's broken. Yeah. He has nothing left. And uh, then we jump back to the storm father and Dalinar. And I just love this because you know, the Stormfather was that blunt instrument. And Dalinar, who himself is a blunt instrument, is like, dude, you need some nuance. Uh, have you no <laughs> compassion? We gotta give him we gotta give him more time. And so they're having this sort of debate at the same time that Kaladin is breaking. And suddenly Dalinar recognizes something that he can give to Kaladin realizing this is where the visions are made this, you know, because Dalinar has a lot of experience with the visions. Yeah. And so he's just like, well, I am the bondsmith of the, uh, of the storm father. I'm going to make some bonds right now. I'm just going <laughs> well, to pull very, that in. Yeah. Well, it's very interesting because the storm father is, you know, it's like we tried, we can't help them. Like, mm-hmm. Oh, we like, we have to witness this. Like yeah. this is our duty type of thing is, and that's how he views his, his job. He's been the witness to the destruction. And Dalinar's going off on, you know, we, you know, look, here's the visions. What can we do with that? And he's like, y- you have to have a connection. It has to have meaning. Mm-hmm. And then Dalinar suddenly starts talking in the cap, the same capital letters the Stormfather does, mm-hmm. which is something oh, that you right. can't understand through the audiobook only. Yep. Um, mm. That's that's why and, the first time I read anything of Brandon's, I always go print first, and then go back to audiobooks later. Yeah, mm. and it, it's making you understand there's there's something more going on with what Dalinar is doing, and even the Stormfather. Which, although this isn't that a shock at this point, because the Stormfather has already talked about how the things you're doing are different, and I don't really know what to think about it. Yeah, he's <laughs> yeah. doing things he shouldn't be able to. That yeah. Should- 
does. Well, and he thinks it's because of the the weak, you know, with honor being gone, it's weakened some of the the limitations he's put mm-hmm. on things. Mm-hmm. No, and then I, it's just that whole thing. I'm connecting him, uniting him. And it's like, with what? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And the Stalinar picks the perfect thing. Mm-hmm. The only thing that really could have worked, I think, in this moment. Because this yeah. is where Kaladin started to feel that failure. Mm-hmm. You know, Tian was his, this is his little brother. This is the one thing that brought light to him when his depression was at its worst. Somehow Tian wove the light inside of Kaladin. Because as we know, like as Brandon has has revealed, Tian was on his way to becoming a light weaver. Kaladin notices the same thing, the same feeling from Shallan when he, when they're in the, the chasms together Mm -hmm. and it's there's something about them that are able to lift that from him a bit and so when tian the the one thing that was kind of stave you know blocking the the clouds the gloom was gone and kaladin thought it was his his fault he just was overwhelmed and somehow Dalinar is able to reach out and find that one pinprick of light and say, this is what we need to connect him to. Yeah. I just, and, and so, you, you know, so Kaladin wakes up in the battlefield and he's just like, things seem strange. He's a little disoriented. Um, I, 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 yeah, I, he was li- a second ago. He was falling yeah. to his death and suddenly, what? <laughs> Well, and again, this is something that Dalinar is very familiar with because he's been through several visions. And so we as readers are familiar with how this works because it's just this Mm. jolt and you're in a different place in someone else's body. Yeah. And so Kaladin is in someone else's body. Uh, But he talks about, it's really interesting. He talks about how he's, you know, he's only a youth. He's so young. He couldn't be older than 17 or 18. And I'm just like, Kaladin's like, what, 22 at this point? 21 he does acknowledge he's like i'm not actually that much older than that but mm-hmm. it seems so much younger well he, he talks about something he's like it happened in his youth i'm just like in his youth you're not that you're far still off. in your youth he's like yeah. 19 right yeah he that, starts that, out at 19 yeah so he's probably okay, like so he's like 20 21 22 you know somewhere. 21 22 i'd say but yeah because there's a year between this one and oathbringer yeah right? yes. yeah but, but you know, again, but to be fair, he's been through a lot. <laughs> like he he he's well, he's, gro- he's grown up. I mean, he's att- essentially died and been reborn at this point. Um, and uh, it, it's funny because he starts spouting off about Amaram because you know he remembers what a garbage person Amram was <laughs> and the squad leader's just like, dude, you, you, you can't talk like that. You're going to get, uh, you're going to get in big trouble. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and then he recognizes exactly where he is. He knows exactly which battle this is. And he's just like, are you kidding? Why this? Of, Why now? Of all the places. Yeah. He says, I can't can't, watch this again. I can't watch this. Not again, because his brother, his favorite person in the world, essentially died in his arms at this place. And he promised to keep him safe. And he exactly. He, he vowed to his mother that he'd keep him safe. Mm -hmm. And then after that, he kept trying to atone for that by protecting the young boys in the army. Yeah. And failing. This is, yeah, this is the literal like the thing that has been holding him back Mm -hmm. is that he won't accept that he couldn't have saved him, that everything, there was no circumstance where you could have done Mm -hmm. it. He, he tried not your fault. Yeah. He tried to make this vow in or oath in Oathbringer, but he wasn't able to because this is still weighing on him this moment yeah. that he's being forced to relive right now. No. Well, and you think about like 
he should have gone home like a long time ago, but he couldn't face down that shame. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, you, I mean, you remember the moment that he goes back to Hearthstone and he has to face his parents you know, and his mom ready to get yelled at. Yeah. And, and they're just like, we're glad you're still safe. Yeah. We, you, we grieved both of you. And we're, we get one back. We're happy we, to get exa- one back. You know, we lost two sons and one of them has returned. This is a good thing. We, you know, we mourn T and we, we grieve him. We, we hate that. You know, we, we feel pain at that loss, but well, you're back. Well, it's also, he's, he promised them he would protect Tien and to him, mm-hmm. That's the important part. I promised and I failed. Mm-hmm. They never held him to that because no. they, they, with the, <sighs> you know, the benefit of age mm-hmm. and wisdom, understood you can't make that promise. It wasn't a they fair promise. Gonna, yeah. 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 They never Tien were going was, to hold him to that. Yeah. Tien but to him, it was today. everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he is, you know, the storm, what does the storm father always call him? Son of honor, son of Tanavast. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, when he says things, he intends to. He does his utmost to, to do to them. follow through. Yeah, yeah. Even if they're literally impossible, which you know, to his credit, dude's done some impossible stuff. But <laughs> yeah. um, like even he has limits, and that's the part he's never accepted. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then Tien comes up and ho- takes his hand because Kaladin's sitting here just panicking, and Tien comes up, takes his hand. And he says, we're stronger together. Three are stronger than one, right? And and well, that was like, that was to the kids that he was saying it. Yeah. No, it's a Tian came and took Kaladin's hand and then walked him forward. Oh, and then yes, there was another know. kid. And he said, the three of us together are stronger. And, and Kaladin addresses him and Tian turns to him and he's like, they would have been alone. They needed someone to help them feel brave. <laughs> and... Tian responds to Kaladin, not to, to Dim, but to Kaladin. Mm-hmm. You know, he says, you were terrified. I saw your eyes. Of course I was. Who wouldn't be afraid? That doesn't change that I needed to be here for them. And it's just like, okay, Tian is kind of amazing. Yeah. Like he's, he's the scared little brother, but he's the one who just like, He's not naive. Like he, he seems like he would be naive, but he's got a wisdom beyond his years. And yes, I realize this is a reflection, an echo of Tian, but at the same time, this is Tian. Well, mm-hmm. we don't know what this is. Right. This is something beyond this, what the normal visions yeah. are. Mm-hmm. Like we, we know he, we can, like even at the very end of this, Kaladin's not sure what happened. Yeah. And whether or not he made that up in his head, if that was something Dalinar made up, if it's some echo is, or is it something with the connection to the spiritual realm and he's mm-hmm. actually talking to somehow yeah. Tien beyond the grave. It's, we don't know. And I don't think Brandon will ever oh, no. answer that. Not, he, ne- he's already said he doesn't, not he's a not going to answer what's in that third. Not a chance. Yeah. Realm. But I just, I just love where he, he you know, Tien says, it's all right. I'm here to help you feel brave. He says, I'm not the child you see, Kaladin whispered. I know who you are, Cal. And this is where the tears came. This is where mm-hmm. I just started. Like today, like yeah. this wasn't the first time I read it, but today I read that line that and I just was like, oh gosh. <laughs> just- well, yeah, I, I reread this last night and I had I had reread the scene with Adolin and, and Maya, which already started, you know, me getting teary eyed. And uh-huh. then I started, I'm reading the stuff and I'm like, oh man, I'm just going to be crying by myself. So, yeah. uh, YK in chat says, since we know Tian was close to swearing the first ideal, it's not impossible that he was a cognitive shadow. Very possible. I don't know that it was directly that, but like something connected. One hundred percent is not a cognitive shadow. Yeah, I don't think it's a full shadow, but there's definitely some echo, some some of Tian there. Something more than of, yeah, more than the the characters who the the people who were in Dalinar's vision. Exactly, he's not just a vision that Dalinar created. There's well, no, something because it's, it's it's responding, mm-hmm. like yeah. No, it's uh, look, it's 
the, get your get your tissues. This is mm-hmm. this is one of the <laughs> most beautifully sad and gorgeous things Brandon's ever written. It's like, come on, perfect. If you didn't cry during the scene, like I have, I feel like I have a heart of stone. Meanwhile, as I was like finishing up this book, driving my car around, I was bawling, mm-hmm. and not and like it wasn't. It wasn't that attractive bawling that like handsome actors do where it's one single manly tear. No, it was ugly. Yeah. Ugly crying. I, like, Absolutely. I, I wonder what people going down the other side of the road thought. Like I was crying like I did at the end of Coco. So, you oh, know. Oh, co- don't, no, don't yeah, listen to that movie. Exactly. No, I you can't, know. Can't. <laughs> My kids are so scared of that movie. They've never made it to the oh, end, but like. Oh, it's so good. That song. Every time. Anyway. Mm-hmm. Yeah. We're good. We're fine. But uh, like, I, I, yeah, I was, well, I mean, rem- Jordan remembers the first time I read this, as soon as I finished this scene, I had to step away and kind of catch my breath. And so I took some laundry down at, and our laundry room is through Jordan's bedroom because it, uh, and uh, so I, I was going through and Jordan looked up at me and he says, I said, I'm fine. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and I just went in and I, I closed the door behind me because I'm just like, no, I'm not. Nope. Not Okay. I can't purse it right now. Oh gosh. It was, just, I was just nasty snot running down my face. It was the, the ugliest kind. It was great. Ugly um, but I love that Kaladin responds to him. He's like, I'm supposed to protect you. I'm supposed to hold you. And he is, says, and you did as I helped you. Why do we fight? Why do we keep going? And Kaladin says, I don't know. I've forgotten. Mm -hmm. That's where your brain goes in those moments, in those pits. You can't even remember what good, what hope, what light is. And that's why what Kaladin needed after he was slapped a little bit was a reminder. It's so we can be with each other. And and then I love this. He says, they all die, Tien. Everyone dies. And Tien's response is just so matter of fact. He's like, so they do, don't they? And it's just like. Funny that. He's like, yes, that happens. And? And he says, that means it doesn't matter. None of it matters. And Tien's response, that's the wrong way of looking at it. Since we all go to the same place in the end, the moments we spent with each other are the only things that do matter, the times that we helped each other. In other words, journey before destination. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I love the next line. He says, look at it, Cal. See the colors. Which is such a TN thing. Well, because that's what he did with his stones. He would Mm -hmm. show him these stones that he finds, and he says, look at it. See the colors. Says if you think letting t- and, and I'm just like branded, you're a master. You were tying this back four books oh, ago. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. He says if you think letting Taft die is a failure, but all the times you supported him are meaningless, then no wonder it always hurts. Instead, if you think of how lucky you both were to be able to help each other when you were together, well, it looks a lot nicer, doesn't it? And then this moment, this yeah. moment. He says, I'm not strong enough. You're strong enough for me. I'm not good enough. You're good enough for me. I wasn't there. You are here for me. You're here for all of us. Gosh. (laughs) It just hurts. Gosh. Hmm. And that's the thing is like, he says, I'm not strong enough. He's like, you're not the one who gets to decide that you are strong enough for me. I'm not good enough. You are good enough for me. And he's, he's basically saying that's my call to make. And from what I see, you're good enough. Trust me on this. You can't see it right now. I can. So let me tell you and you believe me i love it i love it so much and i suddenly have gurren logan flashbacks don't be the uh, you who believes in you be the you who believes in me who believes in you sheesh that show was so convoluted 
little bits I saw. Anyway. This porn is just Gurren Logan. But anyway. Um... And then he says, Tef believes in you. The enemy thinks he's won. And this is one of the most Brandon lines, but it fits the character so well. But I, uh, he, the enemy thinks he's won, but I want to see his face when he realizes the truth. Don't you? It's going to be delightful. <laughs> it's like, oh, man. He's like, Catherine I want to be there smiling. when a when an evil god realizes how wrong he is. Yeah. <sighs> if he kills us, he simply dropped us off at a place we were going anyway. We shouldn't hasten it. And it is sad. But see, he can't take our moments, our connection. And those are things that really matter. Well, when you think about it, like, compare this to Moash, where he took his pain, but he also, like, by taking his pain, he also takes his ability to really feel anything. He's mm-hmm. just numb. He's just angry and numb. Yeah. Yeah. And so it's one of those things where... It's like he can't take our connection mm-hmm. unless you give it to him. And it's capital connection. Again. Yeah. yeah. I, I feel like I quote this line all the time, but in First Night, there is a peace that is only to be found on the other side of war. And this is, the, this is Tian saying, you're almost there. You're almost to the other side. Here is that peace. Keep going. You're so close. Well, you know, while Moash is like, no, I'm not going. It, it, it's it's easier over here. And it's just like, it seems easier. But once you get to the other side, oh my gosh, it's so much better. Yeah. And I love, this is, this is a Brandon sort of channeling some Christopher Nolan Inception energy right here, where he says, is it real? Are you real? Or is this something made by the Stormfather or Wit or someone else? And Tian smiled, then pressed something into Calden's hand, a small wooden horse. Try to keep track of him this time, Cal. I worked hard on that. And then Cal's taken out of the moment, uh, out of the moment between moments and the the horse evaporates, but it's just sort of like, this is the kind of totem of, was was this real? We don't know. Well, and that's what leads to at the end of the book Mm -hmm. where... Uh, Dalinar's like, oh, Liv found your flute. It was with the salvage, and he goes there and he mm-hmm. finds it. And it makes again it makes you wonder what was it that, exactly that Dalinar touched. Uh huh. And with connection, there's a lot of weird shenanigans that uh, we don't know what's going on yet. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I mean, you, we we've seen, you know, with uh, with shy what you can do with someone who can manipulate identity itself. Yeah. We've seen with Dalinar and Ishar, some of the hacks you can pull off with connection itself. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And they're only scratching the surface. And with that, I think it's time for a break <laughs> <laughs> because we've got a moment coming up. And I think once we hit that moment, we're going to avalanche. And so we got to, we got to stuff it right now, but gosh, I love this scene with Tian. <laughs> I love it so much. I'm proud of myself well, for not actually like letting the crying happen, but I think it's because you did all the talking, Bill. So I well, and and we're we're still going. Just so you know, we haven't started the break. <laughs> oh, yet. I know, I know. <laughs> but uh, the other thing is, when I first read this, like I've 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 mentioned it before, y'all are aware because shortly after this, my dad passed away, um, and it it was. Like he was in the hospital at this point. So I was sort of going through one of the roughest times of my life. Um, Mm -hmm. But this moment, this moment, and then the earlier you will be warm again. Those are the two things that got me through. Like, so it was the, it was a rough time to read this, but it was a perfect time to read this. And I just, I think Brandon has summed it up so well. And just so clearly he's, he's created this beautiful metaphor parable, like just sort of a moment that you can look at Mm -hmm. and understand. So, yeah. All right. Well, we will stop there and we will see the rest of you in just a few minutes. And we are back. Ah, how, how, how was your breather guys? Are y'all, are y'all actually, are you feeling a little better? 
I needed that, I Maybe. think. Maybe, mm-hmm. yeah. We'll see. We had that- a very fun conversation during the breather, and it's the number one reason why you should come to the live streams. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. So Kaladin is now tumbling through the darkness, and he immediately reaches out for Syl. Mm-hmm. Um. And I, 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 again, I love the visuals that, that Brandon puts here because he's just falling, falling, falling. And he sees a pinprick of light and he's like, but that's not her. He calls for her. He says another pinprick and another and another and another and another and another. And, and then... suddenly he sees her or he recognizes her. He says he reached in the darkness and seized her hand, pulling her to him. She grabbed him physical in this place and his own size. And the Kaladin Sil shippers started screaming in the wings because <laughs> this is basically well, the uh, this is the the Tinkerbell and Peter moment in Hook where she's his size and she wants to give him a kid. No, this is that's not what's going on here. But you know, people are thinking this. I, I liked it. I liked the synops and how it lined up with when he was despondent before and he let go of her hand. The symmetry. The symmetry, yes. I was like the synchronicity or the mm-hmm. synchro. I was like, it's not. It's not a word. I've got to right. try again. But yes, don't let that <clears> stop. Symmetry. You. I liked how Paral- they, he let go parallelism. of her and now he, he grabbed her hand again. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. T- technically, the literary term for that is parallelism. It has been far too long since I got my degree, so I have forgotten those terms. You <laughs> forgot the words. I can't remember I what I had for breakfast word. today, but I remember that. So. <laughs> I'm glad you do. At least one of us mm. does. But actually, no, she held to him and she's saying, I forgot, I've forgotten the words. Mm-hmm. I'm supposed to help you, but I can't. And it's just like, she is going through the same sort of despair because she has started to regress like, again. Not, not just regress, but like some of his emotions kind of bleed to her. Well, it's because mm-hmm. she went, she went to Dalinar and she mm-hmm. was asking him for help to, yep. to understand him so she could help him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And it's I like, forgot, oh, yeah. be careful. Be careful what you wish yeah. for. Do you want well, to understand that? Because it hurts. And that's another thing. Like, again, as someone who's gone through depressive moments, it's like when uh, you're trying to rescue a drowning person. You don't just grab them because they'll latch onto you and they can bring you down. So it's just you want to be careful in this instant. Yes, absolutely help them, but be very careful when you're when you're stepping in um and and so and that's the thing is she's started to to drown a little bit in this whole situation Mm -hmm. and she has the same feeling of i have i'm failing i'm I'm supposed to be here to help you and i can't and he he's suddenly in tian's place Mm -hmm. he says you are helping by being here and besides i know the words well they come back and then he says that yeah Mm-hmm. Well, and he says, besides, I know the words. And then he hears T and it says, say them, T and whispered. I I love the way that shows up because as far as we know, T and's not there. Yeah. But then yeah. He, he says, I know the words and, and it just says, say them, T and whispered. I have always known these words. Say it, lad, do it. And that's just like, that's Taft. Mm-hmm. Taft is the one who calls him lad. For a second, I was like, "That's not Tien saying that line." No, that has to be Taft. Well, and he it's all, call it, but lad. it also it also matches what Tien told him in whatever yeah. that place was because mm-hmm. he said he said Taft believes in you. Not, yes, not believed. Yes, it was present tense. Hmm. Mm-hmm. There's there's there, there's just something to that moment because again, the Stormfather is fused with the cognitive shadow of a shard you know he is the closest thing to tanavast slash honor that exists right now and so he has that connection to the spiritual realm we don't know the specifics we don't know about much about the beyond but Mm -hmm. brandon has given us little peaks and then said take for take that forward with and however you're going to interpret that that's as far I'm as I'm giving you, but it. yeah. And sometimes that's the best thing is, you know, don't tell us what midichlorians are, you know, <laughs> like get, you know, just sort of give force. us the hint just and let know, yeah. us figure it out. Cause mm-hmm. what we figure out on our heads is going to be so much better for us individually than whatever it is that you tell us it is. Yeah. And I like that Brandon 
don't show the monster allows that yeah um and and again it's these two people who are in his mind his biggest failures tian and teft one the one that you know began the very first one and one the most recent and uh he just shouts he says i accept it stormfather i accept that there will be those i cannot protect the storm rumbled and he felt warmth surrounding him light infusing him he heard sil gasp in a familiar voice not the stormfathers these words are accepted so we don't ever have it clarified who that is that's we? dalinar you know that's dalinar oh okay was well, because I guess he was talking in capital letters earlier. Wasn't yeah, he? It's, it's heavily so. implied that's Dalinar. That's yeah, no, I, I, I'm you wonder certain what, that's Dalinar. I'm 99% sure it's Dalinar, but it makes you wonder what, what is it about Dalinar now that Dalinar gets to tell people that these words are mm-hmm. accepted? Mm-hmm. What is Dalinar becoming? Mm-hmm. And then oh, he yeah, said, yeah. he says, and it's just like after the storm rumbling and all this stuff happening. We couldn't save Teftsil, Kaladin whispered. We couldn't save Tien, but we can save my father. And when he opened his eyes, the sky exploded with a thousand pure lights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. When it goes so well with, um, you know, just him being unable to say it, in in Oathbringer. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. it's just he finally he finally gets over this hump that he's going to have that like, he's going to let this go. Mm-hmm. And you know, going further, we get the the symbol of that when he uh when he saves his father and his father he sees the the sash the marking sash on mark, his yeah. father's forehead and father has that moment where he's just like i thought maybe i should start believing in my son is like if an and entire tower could believe in my son i figure i, I should, should probably do. start trying to do the same yeah well and they finally you know get the, the this you know maybe our answers are right for ourselves because the, mm-hmm. that's the that's been the problem is they just haven't been on the same wavelength their entire life mm-hmm And they're both trying to live a good life, but this tension just constantly pulls at them. Mm -hmm. And then symbolically, as his father has the sash brand on him, Kaladin's flakes off. That moment, I love the symbolism because remember, Kaladin has, has that identity so ingrained in him. And I, I, the thing that's brilliant to me is so many people think Kaladin has that uh, so ingrained in him that it's part of his identity is that he's a slave. It's not that he's a slave. It's that he's dangerous. That he's a failure. Yeah. Because, because the Shash brand means dangerous. Mm-hmm. And because the people around him get killed. I and think so when now the he's ex- putting the brand on him. Did it because it he was fighting back? Yeah, but right. He probably took but, it the way you're saying. But you but, but but the the reason it didn't heal, I think, is because this is what Kaladin believes: is I am dangerous. I yeah. bear this mark. Mm. Well, and, and now when for- he accepts that there are people he can't protect, and that it's not his fault, that's mm-hmm. when the brand falls away. Yeah. Uh, I love the, I can't, I was looking for the exact spot, but he says something to the effect, like it flaked off, like discarding a shell that he outgrew one mm-hmm. great symbolism on Roshar, just given that everyone is <laughs> sloughing off shells because everyone is crab person thing. Um, but two, just that he had finally like outgrown this, this, this poor image of himself and he was ready to move on to the next step. Not, you know, he's not done, but because that, that's one of the things that's always so cheap about how a lot of people, uh, you know, how a lot of people, do, you know, depict this stuff that, you know, as if like, and now they're over this. And it's like, no, that's fine. It's like, they're not over this. Like, there's still going to be down days. There's still going to be 
toughness. There's still going to be, you know, it's like there's no magical cure for mental health. But but you will be one again. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So I found the I found the quote you were you were talking about, Jordan. But as he did, he found scabs flaking away. Sorry, I'm going to cry anyway. Flaking away, the brands <laughs> falling off to the stones below like a shell outgrown, discarded. Clean, smooth skin was left behind. So, you know, Brandon doesn't tend to go for the heavy handed. Uh, but yeah, I like, similes I like the, and metaphors. The shell but outgrown. That's that's probably what we were thinking of. And that that's very it's perfect there. Mm-hmm. Well, the other part it, I love. He has outgrown it is the thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. He outgrew it a long time ago, but he mm-hmm. wouldn't let it go. Mm-hmm. He's emotionally outgrown it now. And I also like once he's got his father saved, the two of them have a little bit of banter. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> well, like, and oh, it, surgery it, should be timely. You think this is timely? Is <laughs> he's, he's looking like, like he tight, was twenty he feet so, away yeah. from dying? Well, he's and like, it's like, funny because I, I, I and I you know think a lot of this comes from Hestia. You know, because this his his mother Hesina Hesina sorry my my sorry my, he, he's the, not married to the goddess of the hearth and that's <laughs> what <laughs> that's that's where my brain pulled that from but uh, which she kind of is you know yeah might as well be. of Hearthstone particularly <laughs> there we go but uh, I wonder if that's where he got that name. but just you know she's got that sardonic wit and so it's just like you know that both of because. Liren isn't naturally this. Ha, ha, he doesn't naturally have this kind of banter personality. Yeah, banter no, he's stuff, a yeah. stiff. No, and yeah. Ka- Kaladin, and it's just like I see her influence on both of them here because she raised him and she married <laughs> him, and, and and they influenced each other. And mm-hmm. uh, so I just I, I love this moment where both of them kind of come together in that personality. Yeah. But again, this is this is Brandon saying something very, very blatantly in a specific context that it fits perfectly within the context, but then you can look at it outside and just be like, this is brilliant. Where the, um, is like, I thought your way might be correct and that I'd been wrong, but I don't think it's that simple. I think we're both correct for us. And it's just basically the concept of two different mindsets can coexist, both be right, and help each other. I love that. I love that. Yeah. It's not just my way or the highway. You can yeah, coexist. And- well, love- and this problem, Liren is so dedicated to his pacifism mm-hmm. that he's the type of person that would let evil, you know, run Rule. through the world. And to the point, well, the, you the, know, what's the what's through the- stone and... He's still able to function, mm-hmm. but you know everyone's living under tyranny. What's well, what? What's the famous quote? Uh, all that's needed all for evil. evil to triumph is for good men to do nothing. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But at the same time, he's right about the Alethi and all their needless wars mm-hmm. and oh, how yeah. people are dying for no reason, mm-hmm. and that the frankly the battle he and Tien fought in. Was pointless. Absolutely, it was pointless. between two people who were supposed to be even... allies mm-hmm. for a minor land skirmish. Well, and so he's and, not he's not and, wrong. Well, and Amaram that. was putting them into this danger intentionally so that he could get promoted and sent somewhere else. Yeah, he was throwing away lives for this. And the people underneath him were throwing away like Tien's life. He was just thrown away because mm-hmm. he was just bait. You, you work, work with, with you work with what you have. Ah. Oh. It just, and so, but at the same time, look at what this life has done to Kaladin. It has it oh, has it worn him completely through. Mm-hmm. And, and so, what I like about like I like that the you know sort of the end scene is like, come on, let's go save people. You in your way, me in my way. Mm-hmm. And just sort of acknowledging there is a value to both. Mm-hmm. There is a something that oh that can't, comes to mind is in the wheel of time i'm not going to go into specific details but there's a character who is a blacksmith and he he keeps going back and forth between should i be wielding the axe or the hammer the axe is something as a weapon of destruction or the hammer as a weapon in the forge um and it's just like there's an importance to both and kaladin and lyra need each other 
so much because they balance each other. Yeah. <sighs> um, so we were talking about when Kaladin heard the words, these words are accepted. Mm -hmm. uh, if you just go to the next chapter, Dalinar, it's, it's pointed out that Dalinar said these yeah. words are accepted. So it is him. Yeah. I'd forgotten. He reveled in what he'd heard and felt, what he'd said. These words are accepted. Accepted. Yep. Okay. So there we go. Confirmation right there. Yeah. So the other thing going a bit further than where we've been, when Kaladin makes his grand entrance as they're, mm -hmm. you know, killing civilians. Uh, well, first I love, because Navani also then has her moment because this <laughs> is Sandra Blanche. So everyone's having moments <laughs> of all sorts of kinds. And like Leslie um, and Venley are having their moments and Relaine's having his it's Oh, like there are so them. many good moments. Mm -hmm. And Dalinar is now horrified because of what he's seen. But anyway, um, no, like this is Navani's like, you know, fused with the sibling and can see everything the way a sibling can. She can see Kaladin, who she was convinced was dead because as soon as Moash showed up, she thought it was because Moash had killed him. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, and he's like, oh, he's going, he's coming here. He's going the wrong way. And she's able to tell him, go somewhere else, you know, go here. And mm -hmm. what I, this is the thing that's, you, you want to talk about like Kaladin has no delusions of grandeur and why he's just like the perfect soldier. He hears words from a commander he trusts and he immediately goes and does it. Yep. He's like, he okay, doesn't, I do. Yeah, he's just like, I trust you. Because he doesn't do things unquestioningly. He questions authority a lot. Mm -hmm. And it's like what him and Yesna are bumping heads and, you know, or butting heads, yeah. bumping heads. That's weird. That doesn't make any sense. But um, but, but it's not you know. just, he He doesn't just trust Dalinar. Dalinar earned his trust. Yeah. yeah. And the same with Navani. Navani mm -hmm. has earned his trust. Absolutely. That crazy and, contraption and things, yeah. Yeah. Well, it's not just that. It's, you know, she, she's, the, the problem for a soldier is a soldier holds no control over their fate. Mm -hmm. They are mm -hmm. trusting their superiors to put them where they'll be most useful and where their lives will be spent, not wasted. It's why Amaram is a horrible person and Dalinar is a good one mm -hmm. because Dalinar spends lives. Amaram threw them away. But um, he's also thrifty with those lives. Yes. He doesn't spend it, them it, flippantly. Yeah, it's yeah. there's a weight to it and he understands it. Navani has proven that she she has that same type of mindset. She doesn't mm -hmm. she doesn't just throw things away. So she has earned his trust. And so she tells him to do something. He doesn't question it. He trusts her. And it's mm -hmm. because we don't get a lot of Kaladin Navani scenes. Mm -hmm. It's one of those things like it's small, but it shows that this is the relationship the two of them have. Mm -hmm. That that same yeah. that you know she's earned the same respect that he gives to Dal. Uh, frankly, he questions Dalinar a lot more than he does Navani. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah. Well, true. A lot more than she questions herself. A lot less than she questions herself. Well, and that, that's so, the thing you know. is she questions herself enough that he's like, okay, I'm, I'll, I'll trust you. Yeah. Yeah. Which, I mean, there's a lot of that to go around with this crew anyway. Right. So <laughs> everyone trusts each other a lot more than they trust themselves. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Self doubt. What? But I've never heard of that. What I love is what, what, uh, so he goes and then he starts frankly starts using his armor like a green lantern ring and yes you know, he does as he's, as he's protecting everyone and his last words he says i love it's like you may turn in your weapons Stormbless said to the enemy and return to your kind unharmed so long as you promise me one thing he smiled tell him that i'm particularly going to enjoy hearing what he looked like when he found out what happened here today <laughs> Fulfilled. Yeah, I, I, I felt it, it felt very Iron Man to me, where he's like sending yeah. out pieces of the armor and it's, you know. Yeah, Iron Man 3 style. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and the other thing I love about it is. Oh, I love that, though. I've said a lot about how Kaladin is a total drama queen. <laughs> and he, uh -huh. he, 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 to he totally goes for the theatrical, like, and just like once again, Kaladin frickin Stormblast. How did he go come to this battlefield? Him and the rest of his Windrunners, like they they march in, like to the battle, surrounded by the enemy. How does he enter this battlefield? Just makes this grand entrance. He's got a speech ready. <laughs> well, it's like, how does Kaladin enter the battlefield at the end of Words of Radiance to fight Zeth? 
he he literal he does the hero. literal superhero three point landing. Says the winds are mine. This the sky is mine. I claim it as I now claim your life for crying out loud, dude. <laughs> I want to know was he like trying to think of that line like as he was flying there, like, like shopping like, it? Yeah, yeah. And he's so. What do you think of this? And she's like, I don't know. Like, I, it's, it's a little... I think Sills whispering it to him like without him even realizing yeah, it. it. <laughs> she she's puppeting him when he does these dramatic moments. It's just mm. over here. Yeah. And it's like, no, I'm the stoic. And it's like, no, you're clearly a drama student. <laughs> mm-hmm. Uh, yes. He's living his lo- his best cinematic life. <laughs> Kaladin's cinema blessed. Oh man. But yeah. Ah, guys. This is one of the <laughs> best sequences. Mm-hmm. Uh like I, I've, I have my issues with with Rhythm of War. I've 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 said, of the four, it's either my least favorite or it's tied with uh, Way of Kings. That doesn't mean that it's bad. Like you you can have the like something's got to be at the bottom. <laughs> Whether um, Diet God is still God. As 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 Jordan said, I think in uh, our second episode, um, it's like saying it's my least favorite steak, you know? <laughs> um, but uh, these moments, like it, it, it's sort of the way I view Matt Smith as uh doctor who he has mm-hmm. some lower points than uh, Tennant. David Tennant, Lieutenant, yeah. but his, but his high points. Oh my gosh. And in this book, this book's high points are just out of this world. Yeah. So. The, the, he talks about how he, uh, before how he had several scenes in this book were, which were ones that he had been building up to for a very long time. Mm-hmm. And, but I think tell, this is the one, like, I think yeah. he said, this is the one that he's been building up to since the very beginning. He's been waiting and excited to write this scene mm-hmm. since the very beginning. Oh, yeah. It's, and I'm and so it, glad that we got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, I understand when it's a Sander Lanch and you have to jump between the, the, between the different perspectives, but part of the time it's like, no, I want to stick with Kaladin because he's doing the really cool thing, so I need to focus on that and, and then finish that, and then we can do everybody else. But Always leave them it. wanting well, more. I know. Yeah, well, and, and during a Sander Lanch, cause you're just like, Dalinar's like, well, that's settled. Now let's go to the Island of Horrors. Well, we're in the middle of the Island of Horrors. Let's still see what Navani's doing. Oh, well, let's see if Moash is having a cry. cry. Oh, no, no. Okay, let's see what uh. Venley's up to. You just keep bouncing through it. It's like, it doesn't make, you know, timeline-wise any sense to just stick with one. But at the I same know. time, you're just like, focus, focus. Oh, no, I, I love it. I, I absolutely love I, the, the pacing that he does here. Yeah, I mean, I it, it works, but like, I also have like, the, I, I want to know, but I mean, I, yes, I do care about that, but I also want to know. It's it's just like, I remember the first time reading it, like I, it was less jarring, I think maybe because mm. I was more caught up with it versus this time I was just kind of picking and choosing what parts well, I was reading. And so I was yeah, less. Because we're trying to talk about you, one specific Yeah, you thing. were, yeah. Look, we were talking about Kaladin. And so <laughs> you're like, okay, where's Kaladin? Because you any literally Kaladin. had to, had to. Well, and Kaladin. it's nowhere near as convenient as, like, say, the the ending to the Lost Metal, because Wax and Wayne are together mm-hmm. um, before you know Wayne sends him flying. Um, and so, as soon as Wax is sent off, like it stays with Wayne, mm-hmm. and it stays yeah. with Wayne the entire way, except for two brief instances where you see what Steris and Marisi are doing. Mm-hmm like right before the bomb goes off and mm-hmm. like everyone yeah. can sort of feel the world like holding its breath. Yeah. Yep. That calm before and, the storm. Yeah. And then like, and so you don't have the issue of bouncing around. Whereas here it's, it's not just Sander Lynch. First of all, this book started as, at a Sander <laughs> Lynch yep. because it's at the, it's at the end of the story that Brandon didn't tell of the, whatever book happened in between these yep. two. And yeah. so it's kind this of is, cheating. This, yeah, this is like four different Sander Lanches happening at the same time. Mm-hmm. It's like I remember when uh, when A Memory of Light, the last book in The Wheel of Time, came out and Brandon had written it. And I'm just like, 
So basically the books that Brandon is writing are the Sanderlanch of the wheel of time. And this is the third book, which is the Sanderlanch of those three books. And then there's this one chapter. And if you've read the wheel of time all the way to the end, you know what chapter I'm talking about. And it's the Sanderlanch of the Sanderlanch of the Sanderlanch of the wheel of the wheel of time. And, uh, you know, we're getting towards the end of arc one of the Stormlight Archive. We still have book five. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Which is only going to be 10 friggin' days. Maybe Um, less if we skip a day. Who knows? We may see some aftermath. Who knows? Yeah. Yeah. We're going to get a 10 or 15 year gap after that too. Chapter one is is day 10 and then and like everything else is after. Uh, that's the that's the title. It's it's uh, the Stormlight Archive Book Five Aftermath. Instead of seven days in Tibet, ten days on Roshar. Oh man! But it's just yeah, I love it. I love it so much. And no, like, it's, um, it is heart the, heart wrenching in all the good ways. The lowest of lows. The high, like emotionally, the the lowest pits of despair to the highest just cheering and shouting in the streets yes. so good so good yeah, it's, it's hard to get crippling depression and exaltation in the exact same chapter but you know here it is there we go mm-hmm. it's crazy oh boy but we love it all right well um this is the part where we would normally do an email but we have actually made it through our backlog of listener questions um, if you have sent one in and we haven't answered it, we do apologize. Send it in again because it's just gotten lost in the shuffle. There's a lot of stuff we're trying to, a lot of plates we're trying to keep spinning. Or like reply moment. reply to your email or something like that, and then it'll make it. A yeah, absolutely. Thing or something. Yeah. Um, but either way, we love hearing from you. So please keep sending in questions. You can ask us about the Cosmere. You could drop us your ideas for topics that you'd like us to discuss during the show. And while you're at it, we would love to hear your feedback about how you think we're doing, as well as any interesting theories you might have about what's going on with the Cosmere. Uh, I'd like to s- make a request. Oh, go for it. I'd like to request you guys send us what stories are where you were ugly crying during this part of the story. Ooh. Cosmere only or outside, even outside this, like this scene in particular, the TN, uh, no, you said moments though. Like what story, what story? Like moments. You did you ugly cry in other storm like books it, or like other? No. in this one specifically, like during the, oh. like, where were you when? Oh, uh, so your story about this, how this made you ugly yeah. cry. Got it. Okay. Oh, where were, oh, where were you physically? Ah, oh, gotcha. Yeah. I'd love to hear those. I'd also love to hear some of the other books or stories that you've read that made you ugly cry the same way or movies or whatever. Like I said, Coco, every single time I see that movie, I am just like nasty, ugly snot running down my face crying. Nope. Uh, but uh, anyway, yeah. Uh, anyway, send all of questions and suggestions in a brief, concise email to Cosmere studies at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. And hopefully we can read that as part of the show. Uh, you can also reach us at the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, P.O. Box 970-063, or Utah 84097. We do have our own personal projects. So, Jordan, why don't you get us started? Tell us what you have going on right now. Oh, uh, well, I am always streaming over on my YouTube channel or Kick, both the, under the name Splice Stream. We are, the Mebomon project is uh, coming to a head. We're almost out of the beta phase, uh, should be starting up in October. If you like Pokemon, come see how I forced Smash to become Pokemon using Amiibo and uh, Tears. Yeah, I'm making, uh, I'm the Ice Ice Amiibomon gym leader. We have eight gym leaders. I have assigned an Elite Four. People are going to be able to challenge gym leaders. I, I, I have a whole setup. He's, I, he's been working on this work, for a while. Working on, yeah, it's probably about, five months worth of work trying to set everything at up. least so yeah so uh i just got done getting all the sprites thanks to neo rice is uh, good who gave me permission to use those sprites because nice. i would not have been able to make them and yep. uh yeah would you say you've got to smash them all yes you do gotta awesome. smash them all <laughs> Amy, well, how I, much- I actually think the, the lyrics for the <laughs> faux song that i want to do but I lack the talent is got to train them all. Okay. Um, I got to figure out how to do that. But anyway, the point is uh, it's, it's a lot of work. I think you'll like it. And if you don't like smash uh, XCOM is back on Saturday nights. And so again, come, come watch uh, 
I have Bill in my party, and uh, he's gonna kill he's me. Probably, he's probably go- no, no, no. I'm gonna you're, die you're horribly. You, now that part's definitely true, but um, gonna we're gonna send- try and prevent it. You're gonna but send my, me my- into the maw of the beast, and I'm gonna be swarmed, invaded by aliens, mind controlled, and die a grisly death. It's very come, possible. Come watch. Uh, Amy, how about you? Um, so my Facebook is Coincidence Cosplay and Props. My Twitter is at Coincidence Cosp because my name is too long. My Instagram is at Coincidence underscore Cosplay. My TikTok is at Coincidence Cosplay, all one word. And my website is www.coincidencecosplay.com. And in exciting news, um, I am going to be on a panel at FanX this year. So, nice. Very cool. Yeah. Do you um, know the it, topic? The, Yes, I have the topic. Yeah, we had to submit topics and all that. Um, So they keep saying that the times can change. But as of right now, it is going to be Friday, September 22nd at 11 a.m. in room 255B. Um, It's going to be me and a couple other different creators. There's going to be Melinda, that Cosmere chick. There's going to be Steve, your boy Steve, um, Cosmere not. Um, It's going to be Ammon porter who is a flat earther and debunker and does lots of other cool stuff with cosmere things and then there's also colby hillman Odd mix. who does yeah. um some cosmere stuff as well and yeah i think that's all of us if i forgot somebody i'm sorry um but yeah so we're gonna do brandon sanderson's cosmere character battle royale and so we have i've made a whole big fabric thing that is a bracket and we have a whole bunch of different characters for who's going up against things uh, like going from like wax and vin and yasna i think is an alternate and we also have like dalinar like blackthorn dalinar and adolin and i have to know what is bracket fabric it's i just used i made it out of fabric because we were told originally we weren't going to have a screen and then we found out that now we will have a screen Mm. but i already made it out of fabrics so like it's just felt and i and it has like so it's like a felt board it's a felt yeah but it's going to be hanging between two things and then i just i made the names with um velcro vinyl and so and then okay and we have velcro so we can just move them along the bracket physically so so you Um, lash it to the wall using stormlight you know that whole thing just just on the down though anyway but yeah so if you are there it would be it would be great for you to come and we will the the, uh the audience gets to pick who wins so we're gonna have steve is gonna be kind of our moderator and and awesome so it'll be fun um and then as for myself i have another podcast my friend dylan and i talk about board games um every other friday we come out with new episodes of the innkeeper's table uh, our most recent episode, we did our top three things that any good game store should have. And uh, we've got a uh, a game spotlight coming up, but you'll have to tune in for the episode to find out what that is. Um, for those of you who want to support the Sandersonian Institute of Cosmere Studies, but you can't become a patron just yet, we'd love it if, if you just let your friends know about the show. Uh, don't forget to subscribe to the podcast. So like and subscribe over on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Leave comments in the in the comment section of the videos as well. And if you want to toss us a good review wherever you listen to us, we would love that. You can also head over to store.streamelements.com slash Cosmere Studies and buy merch branded with our logo and, and stuff like that. It's a lot of fun. Final thoughts. Way to go, Kaladin. <laughs> If this is how much we're going to cry in this book, I am going to need to hydrate before the next book just yeah. to make sure. I, just, uh, just keep a water bottle handy and refill it as needed. Yeah, just. Uh, yeah. I'm beginning to think the Sander bots do run on tears. Probably. <laughs> but how do they collect them from long distances all over? Uh, the Amy magic. They, oh, okay. It's just a magic we don't know about yet. Okay. There, yeah. there, there, there are spirits that collect them, and then when they make stack rocks up, they they bring them all in. Or maybe it's Yolish magic. We just don't know. Or maybe it collects into uh, in, into geodes. The, the tears collect into geodes and become little beads mm. of tear metal. Or cognitive. Something goes around and, and grabs the cognitive tears. The tears uh, fall into the cognitive realm, where no, Brandon harvests it, uh, and then they manifest it back into the real world. <laughs> <coughs> yeah <sighs> there we go all right well 
In addition to the live episodes of the show that stream on youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies every two weeks on Monday nights at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern, listeners can find our videos on YouTube or audio versions of the podcast on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and just about any other service that carries podcasts by searching for Cosmere Studies. You can also follow us on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook under the profile at Cosmere Studies. For our next episode in two weeks, we are going back to Dawn Shard. We did our basic reaction to it when it first came out, but we're going to do a reread and dig a little deeper to see what little tidbits pop out of the ground. So join us for the live discussion in two weeks on Monday, September 25th, 2023 at 7.30 p.m. Pacific Time, 10.30 p.m. Eastern at www.youtube.com slash Cosmere Studies. Until then, on behalf of Amy, Jordan, and myself, thanks for listening. And remember, there's always, there's always another, another secret. Another secret.